time and time again, pickup trucks have been one of the more popular body types searched on autodeal.com.ph. In fact, just last month of this 2022, four out of the top 10 searches on our website were pickup trucks, with the Ranger, of course, topping that list. Now, when a pickup truck first gets launched, everybody is in absolute awe and have got their eyes locked in on the top of the line model 4x4. What with its gleaming exterior and interior, great amount of tech, and it looks so rugged that it can take on any terrain that you throw at it straight out of the showroom floor. I mean, let's face it, it's not as if anybody goes to a car launch and says, yeah, that's nice, but I wonder what the base model looks like. That actually comes in a little bit later when sensibility and reality come in. Oh, and speaking of which, you've got so many 4x4s on our metro roads right now. I mean, if you step outside, you'll see them all there. A huge number of them, a plethora even. But I have a feeling that a very small percentage only have actually seen anything other than pavement. And I know something a little about this because, well, I own a 4x4 and I can count the number of times with one hand the times that I've actually used the 4x4 system. Although, when I did, that was actually a pretty fun day. So what if it's the practicality of a pickup truck that you're after? I mean, it's obvious that these things can carry a heck of a lot more weight than their SUV counterparts could ever dream of. And yes, sure, it's obviously also down on passenger count, but more often than not, they share the exact same platform as their SUV counterparts. So on this episode of Behind a Wheel, we're going to take a look at the differences of the 4x2 and a 4x4 to help the buyers out there who are somewhat torn in the middle. And we're gonna show you the differences and or similarities that they have, including tech inside, comfort inside, technology and power that you find underneath the hood, and most importantly, price and fuel efficiency. Don't forget about fuel efficiency. God, with these prices nowadays. So we're also not just going to focus on this, the Nissan Navara VE 4x2, but we'll also give you perhaps other options that you might consider. And even if you're not in the market to purchase that brand new automobile right now, stick with us throughout this entire video so that we can help prepare you when you're ready to claim that car somewhere down the road. First, let's talk about features and tech. Now, some may think that if you were to shy away from the top of the line 4x4, that it would leave you wanting in terms of when you pick up a 4x2, pick up a 4x2. But the truth is that most 4x2s out there actually still quite packed with tech and features that you may not actually expect. Let's take, for example, the Pro 4X and this VE, which, by the way, we've covered extensively, and if you'd like to see videos, the link should be up on top, but if not, then they're obviously fine down below. Now, at a glance, it's a mere hair. I exaggerate, but it's not really all that far when you're talking about the Pro 4X against this VE 4x2. What they have in common is that there are air vents and a charging point for the rear passengers. Up front, both the top of the line and mid-tier variant gets an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment display with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a 7-inch chip computer flanked by the analog gauges, and cruise control as well, which is a huge help, especially on long trips on the expressway. As for safety, both get intelligent forward collision warning, driver attention alert, and hill start assist. What the Pro 4X has that this doesn't is rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot monitors, lane departure warning, high beam assist, hill descent control, and intelligent around view monitor. So you are missing out on some safety tech, but thankfully, this also does come with a backup camera. Cloth seats only in the VE. You've got leather in the Pro 4X. This is more, well, I think that the VE is a less of a lifestyle vehicle where it is more practicality and it's a workhorse kind of a thing. And that's what the cloth seats actually speak to me like. And besides, in, even in heat like this in December, at least 
if it's since it's not leather seats, it's not like your butt is sliding around like it's a stick of butter on a hot pan. Ui, pancakes. Um, also in the VE, the uh, Suse, not a de push start, which I think is really forgivable. Again, it makes, makes it feel like it's more utilitarian, like a workhorse kind of a thing. Now, if we were to look at other cars in the same segment with the same drivetrain, well, you've got the Ranger, for instance. Now, between the range-topping Wildtrak 4x4 and the mid-tier Sport 4x2, there are some differences in the infotainment size, although I don't know how you'd say that the 10 inches is much smaller because the functions actually remain similar. The large differences lie between the safety technology like blind spot monitors, cross-traffic alert, radar cruise, and auto park assist, among several other things. Though these additional features do add up to make the wild track really up to date with cutting edge safety technologies, impact protection isn't any different between these two as the Ranger scored a perfect five stars in the Euro NCAP. And I know this isn't really a feature, but there are differences in the exterior too, obviously. The top of the line will always be dressed to the nines, but as far as the lower variants are concerned, they still pretty much have a very strong macho vibe. And this is important because people are not only buying pickup trucks for their versatility, but their looks as well. Next up, power and fuel efficiency. On our own testing, the Navara Pro 4X gets about 18 kilometers per liter. Now, this is on the highway. This VE better at 20 kilometers per liter. Naturally, it's probably because that this is a much lighter vehicle since this is only a 4x2. Uh, it doesn't have the 4x4 system, so less mechanical parts means it's a lighter automobile. And after gathering up a bunch of other pickups, we found that the 4x2s on average get about 2, 2.1 kilometers more on the highway. And like I said earlier, that can really add 100 or so more kilometers in one single tank. And over time, the savings, though really nothing astronomical, is really nice to know. Now, two kilometers per liter may not sound like much, but it does eventually add up. Because if you think about it, this car carries about 80 liters of fuel. At two kilometers per liter, that's 160 kilometers. That's like driving from Metro Manila to Tagaytay and back. Yeah, that adds up. Oh, and while we're on the subject of power, Capability plays a very large role when trying to figure out what particular vehicle to buy. So let's say, for example, you want a pickup truck, but every once in a while you want to take it out of the city to go camping. Or say you want to visit your family's farm and help out with some of the chores there. You may think that you are relegated to just a 4x4 because of these things that you want to do. I will beg to differ. Case in point, we took out a 4x2, a BT50 4x2, mind you, and we took it off-road, like into camping grounds and whatnot, where I went fishing for bacon, picked eggs from a bush, and fed the crew too. All done while I was traversing through some of the toughest terrain that I've actually gone through, and that was just a 4x2 pickup. I'm not going to say that a 4x2 is the end all and be all of pickup trucks and you don't need a 4x4 system. No, there is definitely a tactical advantage to a 4x4 system. But in the case of the 4x2, it's still very plenty capable. From the flagship to the mid-level variant for the Navara, D-Max, BT50, you get the same engine between the two. So don't feel like you're missing out on power. Now as for the Hilux and Ranger, though there is a bit of a power deficit, Nothing huge, to be honest. There is still plenty of pull to be found in the mid-tier models. So between the Navara Pro 4X and mid-range VE Caliber 4x2, there is a difference of 430,000 Philippine pesos. That's a lot of coin right there. And if we compare similar models and their variants, on average from the top of the line 4x4 against a mid-tier 4x2, you usually save just about, really, half a million Philippine pesos. So essentially what I'm trying to say is, Wag mo so smallin ang 4x2. Is that even a term? That's a term. That was a term for my generation. Yeah, it's a term for my generation. Wag mo so smallin. Baka mina maliit. You know, I'm not good at the car. So I'm not really good at the car. He tried. He tried. Mina maliit. Wag mo maliit. Oh, tamo yung di mo kaya. Ang tama dapat. Kaya nga tama. So smallin.
Now, the biggest thing to a lot of buyers will almost always be the price. And I totally get that. But if you're ready to purchase and you can deal with some of the compromises that we mentioned earlier in this video, let's say for example, power, technology inside most definitely, little bit of comfort inside, and also the guapness factor on its exterior, well, you'll find that the price difference is actually quite surprising. But if you do opt to get a 4x4 because you want more tech than, let's say, for example, Inspector Gadget, or you want comfort inside like a business class seat, and you need the off-road capabilities of a GOAT, then congratulations, do enjoy your truck. It just speaks that your weekends are probably a heck of a lot more livelier than mine. Because mine's like just ready the grocery and then fighting with the kids and telling them not to put something in the cart. And then Alessandra wants to go outside to buy french fries. And that's every weekend we need to buy french fries. And if it's not french fries, it's the donut that's right next door. And then Antonio wants to get milk tea down to the other side. And then of course I gotta get something for Lisa because she's gonna feel bad. If I don't get her coffee, she's gonna be in a really foul mood. And then I go home with an empty wa- Stop, stop, stop. Sorry, where were we? Whatever. In the case of the 4x2, it most certainly still is a utility vehicle, but with the perception of pickup trucks now leaning more towards lifestyle and not just a cargo hauler, well, the amount of tech and amenities and power that they put in this thing really makes it a great purchase. One that will make you actually lean towards a 4x2 or the 4x2s out there than just simply the top of the line 4x4s. And the one thing that you can always count on, that it'll fit your budget a hell of a lot better too.